G'day guys. I picked up this neat little single board computer, the Orange Pi 03, during the last big AliExpress sale for only $24 Australian delivered, including GST. So today I thought we would try and set it up as a headless server. This is the two gig of RAM variant, but you can also get them with one, one and a half, or four gig of RAM. They are all powered by an all winner H618 quad core ARM CPU and come with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is a nice touch. It is physically a very small device, as you can see. And as far as ports go, you've got micro HDMI on the far left, USB-C for power, a full-size USB 2.0 port, and obviously your Ethernet port. Underneath, you also have your micro SD slot, which it does boot from. Mine also came with a wireless antenna, but it wasn't mentioned in the listing, so I'm not sure if it is normally included. You might also notice a very small heatsink on the CPU. That wasn't included, it was just one I had laying around. You might think the heatsink doesn't do too much, but in my tests, it did lower the temperatures by about 5 degrees on average. We're over on our Windows PC now, and I've just opened up Chrome and gone to the Orange Pi 03 website. I will link it down in the description below. At the top, we just want to click on download. We want to scroll down. We want the Debian image, so just click on that. Should take you to a Google Drive link. We'll be using the 6.1 kernel, and I'll just download Debian Bookworm Server. Once that's finished downloading, we'll also need something to write the Debian image to our micro SD card. I always like to use Rufus. It's gone to the Rufus website, we'll scroll down, and I'll download the portable version, which is 4.9p at the time of filming. If you don't already have it, you'll also need something like 7-zip to extract the image from the compressed archive. Once everything's finished downloading, we'll close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. Just want to extract our image from the archive, so just right click on it, go down to show more options if you're on Windows 11, 7-zip, and extract here. Once it's finished extracting, we're just going to insert the micro SD card we'll be writing the image to. I'll just be using a 64 gig Samsung Evo micro SD. Once we've inserted the micro SD, we'll just open up Rufus. And at the very top under device, make sure your micro SD card's selected. So for me, 64 gig E drive, that's correct. We'll leave boot selection as default disk or ISO image and just click select to the right of that. We want to select our Orange Pi Debian bookworm image. Just double click on it. And once you've triple checked, you have the correct device. Just click start. Just be aware you will lose everything on the micro SD card. So make sure it's either blank or you don't care if you lose everything. You'll get the warning. Just click OK once you've triple checked. You do have the correct device. If you have multiple partitions already on the SD card, you'll get this pop up. Again, click OK. And it should start writing the image. It doesn't take too long since it's not a very big image. Once it's finished writing, we can close off Rufus and we'll just safely eject our SD card. Just right click at the bottom and that should be ready to go. We'll move back over to our orange Pi. So we're back with our Pi. I'm just gonna flip it over and insert the micro SD card, just clicks in. We'll also need to connect it to our TV to set it up. So I'm just using this cheap little two-in-one micro HDMI and mini HDMI to full-size HDMI adapter. It does just barely fit. You can see there's just enough room to plug in our USB-C charger. And we'll also obviously need a USB keyboard. You could connect to your internet using ethernet, but in this video, I'm going to be using the built-in Wi-Fi. I've plugged everything in, so let's power it on. There we go, starting to boot. It does run an initial setup when you first power it on, so the first boot will take a little bit longer than subsequent boots. That didn't take too long, around one minute, and it did automatically log us in. So the first thing we'll do is get connected to our Wi-Fi. We just want to type in NMTUI, press enter. We want to go down to activate a connection. Just select your SSID and enter your Wi-Fi password. Just press enter. That's done, we can press escape and go down to quit. Now we should have internet, so I'll try pinging Google's DNS. And it is working. You can just press Control C to stop the ping. So since I do want to access our server remotely, I will set a static IP. So once again, go back into NM, TUI, go edit a connection, go down to our SSID that we've already connected to, press right, go across to edit. We want to go all the way down to IPv4 configuration, press enter on it, change it to manual, go show. I want to set the IP, so just press enter. Make sure the IP you're setting it to is free. I'll just use 192.168.152. The gateway for me is 192.168.1 and 1. And I'll just use Google's DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 go all the way down to OK, press escape, and go down to quit. Now before our static IP will take effect, we do need to reset the Pi. For that, we can just type in sudo shutdown dash r for reset, space now. Press enter. The default password is orange pi, O-R-A-N-G-E-P-I, and it should reset. It's finished resetting and it has logged us back in again. And you can see our IP is now static to the one we set it to. Next, we want to create a new user. We'll do sudo space add user space and then the username. I'll call it SJSL tech. We need to type in the default orange pie password again, which is orange pie. We want to give our new username a password. You can enter all your details or just spam enter. Press yes. 
and that's our user created. Next, we'll log into the root account. So just type in su, and then again, the password is orange pie. And we want to change the root password. So just type in passwd and enter a new root password. Finally, we want to add our new user we just created to the pseudo group. So while still logged in as root, we'll type in user mod space dash lowercase a capital G space pseudo and then our username. We may need to run it again as pseudo. There we go. You'll notice when you first log in, you do get this nice little message of the day at the very top. It says welcome to Orange Pi and tells you system stats like load, memory usage, CPU temp, uptime, IP and disk used. This is just a script that's stored in etc. So if we navigate there now, cd slash etc slash update dash motd dot d slash press enter. And the one I'm interested in is the system info up here. And that one's called 30 dash orange pi dash sysinfo. So we can run it by typing in dot slash 30 dash orange pi dash sysinfo, just pressing enter. And there's our little stats again. If you wanted to, we could create an alias. So alias, we'll call it stats equals, and then the script. So slash etc slash update dash motd dot d slash 30 orange pi sysinfo. Make sure you close the quotes and we'll press enter. Now if we type in stats, I accidentally left out an N. So that's the correct name. Now if we type in stats, there we go. I think next we will install Docker and Portainer. So to do that, we want to make sure we run an apt get update. So apt dash get space update. So that's finished updating. I will exit out of the root user. Just type in exit. We're back into our orange pi user. Now we'll actually install Docker. There's a nice and easy to use install script. So we'll just do curl space dash SSL and then the URL HTTPS colon backslash backslash get dot docker dot com. And we want to pipe that into bash. Let's press enter. So it says it already has Docker installed. We don't need to run that. I'm guessing it does come with the image. Next, we'll add a non root user to our Docker group so we can run it without root. sudo user mod dash ag docker and then our user sjsl tech press enter and finally we'll install portainer we are logged in as orange pi but i'm assuming since docker was already installed then orange pi should have access to it but if not you would just run this command again with orange pi there we go so to install portainer just type in docker pull portainer slash portainer dash ce colon linux dash arm press enter so now that's finished downloading. The last step we want to do is start Portainer and make sure it automatically starts every time Docker starts. Let's type in Docker space run dash D dash P port 9000 9000 name Portainer restart equals always dash V VAR run Docker dot sock run Docker dot sock again dash V Portainer underscore data data space Portainer slash portainer dash ce colon linux dash arm hopefully there's no typos we just press enter and there was a typo retart so i'll do it again restart there we go that looks much better and that's it it should now be running i will put all of the commands we used in this video down in the description below so you can just copy and paste it in so now everything's set up i'll power off the pi let's do sudo shut down space now that will turn the pi off perfect the power light is off on the pi so I'll unplug the keyboard and monitor and plug it back in headless. We'll then move over to our Windows laptop and we'll have a play around with Portainer. Before we jump over to our laptop and take a look at Portainer, I thought we would just quickly check its idle power consumption. So it's obviously currently unplugged. We'll plug it in. You can see 160 milliamps, not too much. 170, it did peak at around 200. There we go, 260. This is still booting, almost half an amp there. You can also see my power bank is struggling to sustain the five volts. There we go, it's ramped back up. I think we'll let it sit for a few minutes just to let it settle down. So it seems to have settled down to somewhere between 110 milliamps and it occasionally does spike at 200 milliamps. Again, this is idle with Docker, Portainer and SSH running and obviously with the Wi-Fi active and connected. We're back on our Windows laptop and I've just opened Chrome and typed in our Orange Pies IP followed by port 9000. So for me, it was 192.168.152 colon 9000. It's taken us to the Portainer new installation page and it wants us to create a password to log in. We'll leave the username as admin, that's fine. And I'll just create a strong password. It says at least 12 characters long. There we go, we'll just click create user. I guess we'll save it. So this is Portainer. This is just a Docker front end. It makes using Docker a lot easier. 
We'll just start by clicking get started. We'll click on our only environment and here's our little dashboard. If we click on container, it should show us the running portainer container, which it does. We'll click add container at the top right. We'll give it a name, we'll just call it test. Now we need to select an image. There are loads of pre-built images that do awesome things, but I think just a test, we'll go with a plain Debian image. So just type in Debian, click search. There we go. Let's go with the first one, Debian. And we'll just click on tags. We'll go filter. I want bookworm. So there's a few results. We'll scroll down a little bit and I think I'll just go with plain bookworm. So it is just called Debian colon bookworm. Let's go back to Portana under the Docker file for Debian colon bookworm. If we scroll down a little bit, we've got our port mapping. So by default, you won't be able to access any ports from outside of the container. So for example, if you're running a web server, you wouldn't be able to access it. So what we'll do is we'll go map additional port. The host port is the port that you want to access on the outside. So from another computer, when you were typing in the server, that's the port you want to use. So we'll stick with 80, which is the default web port. Go to container. This is the port that we want to expose externally. So again, the default would be 80 since we are planning on running a simple web server. Go down a little bit. I do want interactive and TTY enabled just so we can access the shell. And that's it. We'll click deploy the container and it should automatically pull the Docker image and generate a container. There we go. Container created successfully. So it is running and you can see we have got our port 80 exposed. So that's good. If you click on the little paper clip, it should give us the shell or console as they call it. And here's our little Docker container. So I think just a test, we'll do apt get update and apt get install. I think it's Apache 2. Yep, it was. Let's just press Y, yes. Now that's finished installing. We should just be able to type in Apache CTL start and it should now be running. So if we open a new tab, type in our server IP, 192.168.152. Now we did expose port 80, but because it is the default HTTP port, we don't have to type it. So we can just type in our IP. And there's our little web server. If we go back to the portainer tab, we can detach from the console, go back to our containers. And I think what we'll do is we will select it. So it's a little checkbox and we'll go stop. That should stop all the services and the container. There we go no longer running so if we go back to our little web server and if we refresh so Control shift r for a hard refresh it should no longer be online and it isn't it's that easy overall the orange pi 03 is a neat little single board computer that only barely sips power it idles with docker and wi-fi running at around half a watt which is pretty impressive it was super easy setting it up as a simple little web server and with something like docker there are loads of services that you could run locally there is an Android build available for this little single board computer, and I don't think it would run that badly considering the specs. So I'll definitely be interested in trying that out in the future. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.